side of the ball. Crashing the set there with Maurice Jones Drew. Eric Berry is there with MJD. Take it away, bud. Yeah, Red, I'm here with arguably the the best safety with the ball in his hands. I mean, Eric Berry, talk about it. When you get picks, your intentions, what, you, what, what did you do with it? Just try to uh, get it back to the house, man. You know, we feel like defense is an extension of offense, you know, so uh, as, as much as we can help our team out, you know, we, we strive on that. Now, I mean, some people may call you a, a game breaker. I call you a game saver. I mean, two games in a row, obviously the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons you guys play, you have a pick six on two of those and then a pick two. Like, what was that like running, especially at home, being from Atlanta, running, running that back to win the game? Uh, it was amazing, man. That was, you know, I visualized that so much. And to see it happen, you know, it was, it was truly an amazing experience. And to have my family and friends in town, too, it was great to witness it. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this year. I'm going to keep working for this year and getting everybody on board to handle some business. Well, let's, let's get to this year. I mean, your defense comes back as one of the top defenses this year. Uh, you guys are playing in a tough AFC West against some tough offenses, right? You have the uh, Oakland Raiders. You have the Chargers. Uh, the Broncos are getting better. What, what can you guys do as a defense to, to limit those guys in those explosive plays? Man, just communicate, you know, and just hold each other accountable. I think those are the two biggest things that we can do. And, as long as we get out there and compete and make plays for each other, you know, the sky's the limit. Now, I saw a little bit of practice. I saw you guarding uh, Travis Kelsey one-on-one. -on -one. How is he making you a better cover guy? I mean, it seems like you guys are having battles back and forth. Oh, yeah. It's great going against him on a daily basis because I feel like he's one of the best. And um, anytime I can go against the best, it's going to make me better because I'm going I'm to I'm bring my A game every time. But to have him here every day, and I know he's going to compete. I'm going to compete. And us bringing the best out of each other is going to bring the best out of this team, essentially. So that's what we do on a daily basis. Now, obviously, week one, you guys are going to play the New England Patriots. And right now, you guys are getting better. But have you guys been checking out some of the stuff they've done? And have you been kind of peeking at them uh, for the next couple weeks to come? Oh, yeah, a little bit. You know, that's a part of the game. You want to be prepared. But at the same time, we know they're going to make adjustments and have their they game plan as well. But at, at, at the core, at the root, is all about competing and just trying to stay ahead of the curve. All right, this is the last one. Red, you're going to love this one. Uh, junk Food Fridays. I mean, tell me about it. I heard you got pies, pizza, yeah. barbecue. What do you like at the Junk Food Fridays? Fridays, I actually wait till after Sunday, you know what I'm saying, Sunday and Monday. But um, I can't do it on Friday because the game's still close. I don't want to break my diet then. But, you know, these they got a lot of good bakeries out here in Kansas City. You know, you got Sasha's Bakery, you got Dose. Uh, you know, they got oatmeal cream pies with the real oatmeal cookies, you feel me? So they got that with the cream, the homemade cream filling and so many different things you can just go in and macaroons i mean it's everything bro so hey, listen Rhett. after i give it back to you we need to go ahead and head out to you said what's it called dose's or dose and, Doshay? and, Sasha's, bakery, and Sasha's bakery we're gonna go get us some sure. oatmeal cookies yeah oatmeal cream pies. O oatmeal cream pies yeah. all right <laughs> Hey, it, Maurice, why don't you take some notes from Eric Berry and wait till we are done uh, before you start worrying about lunch, all right, my friend? He waits till, till after game time. You got to wait till after ITC Live. Sound good? No, not at all. No, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think so. Hey, uh, look, look, Eric Berry has made a habit of wreaking havoc on opposing teams' game plans, so no surprise, and, and we'll forgive him for wreaking havoc on our segment there as he uh, showed up with MJD, a segment in which I was continuing my conversation with Mike Garofolo, who's there with the Tampa Bay Bucks, Kim Jones with the Redskins in Richmond. So, Mike, I'm going to come back to you, and we were talking about Deshaun Jackson there, and uh, let's flip to the other side of the ball and talk about that Bucks defense uh, kind of littered with playmakers, especially at that linebacker position, Quan Alexander, Levante David. What are the expectations for that unit this year? They are littering, and, and like I'm stealing Kim's airtime here, uh, the Buccaneers stole Chris Baker <laughs> From the uh, Washington Redskins, he, he now signed down here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's a big body up front. And they've got playmakers on all levels of the secondary. And expecting Vernon Hargraves in his second year at cornerback for him to come along, play more aggressive. You know, it's, it's one thing to do it out in the field in the spring and the summer, but also do it uh, on the field in the fall. They need him to do that. They expect him to do that. And this is a defense that late last year in the second half of the season, uh, Gerald McCoy told me that they had a meeting halfway through and said that we need to get on the same page. A lot of times those meetings don't work. This one did. They lowered their points per game to 17. They were great in the red zone down the stretch, and they were 6-2 and two on the back end because of that defense. So in addition to all those additions on offense, they expect this defense to pick up where it left off last year. 
Uh, no question. All right, Mike Garofolo there uh, with some insight for us on the Tampa Bay Bucks. All right, I mentioned, as promised, Kim Jones is there with the Redskins. So let's head to Richmond here uh, because, Kim, I know you just got a, a look at the Redskins walkthrough uh, there. So what, uh, what did you take away from uh, that early workout? Many takeaways for you, Rhett, from here in beautiful Richmond. For one thing, this is an absolutely fantastic training camp facility. My first time here, it is awesome. The Redskins did hold a morning walkthrough on the field behind me. To my left, there's another full field that they'll work on at 3 p.m. Eastern today when they actually practice for a couple of hours. And in front of me, there's another smaller field for rehab players. We'll get to them in a minute. A first observation would be Terrell Pryor in his, what, second full year? year as a receiver in this league that the switch from quarterback he's made has been absolutely remarkable first of all he is an enormous target for Kirk Cousins. He's listed as 6'4". Pryor says he's 6'5". I'm going with Pryor on that height estimate because he is a very big receiver who looks like he is gaining chemistry with his quarterback. He said of Cousins, Pryor did, he wants to trust you. You have to earn that trust. I asked him how he's doing that. He said with conversations by showing Kirk Cousins that he's a loyal guy and wants to be loyal to his quarterback. He also said on the field by being in the right place and by not allowing the ball to be picked. Those are things that quarterbacks very much like. Couple of quick things. <laughs> Towards the end of the walkthrough, Jordan Reed was on the jugs gun. He is on the uh, the pup list, but he and the jugs machine got a workout today. I was looking at his feet because he has an injured toe. He was kind of doing a few steps, guys, but certainly wasn't running. And Jay Gruden has indicated we won't see Jordan Reed at least this week. And Jim Tom Sula, the defensive line coach, had his defensive linemen doing boxing drills. They had mitts. They were going through rounds. There's a heavy bag here. I've never seen that on a football practice field. It is awesome. <laughs> I wanted to join in. Defensive lineman A.J. Francis told me I didn't want to do that. I didn't join in, but it was really cool to see. After the walkthrough, they went some, through some paces. Boxing training isn't easy, and they were going through it with Tom Sola watching. Well, I'm guessing that heavy bag didn't appreciate its run-in with Jonathan Allen, uh, the Redskins' first-round draft pick from Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, and what an impressive guy he is. We first met him at the Combine. We thought, Rhett, he'd be what? A top three, top five pick. He lasted till 17. Right. The Redskins love him. Jonathan Allen told me that he's very much learning. He's learning on the fly. He's learning against Trent Williams, which would test any rookie. He says Williams gives him things he's never seen before. I caught up with Trent Williams, though, who told me that Jonathan Allen has the talent, the explosiveness, the intelligence, and he's strong enough to be a top pick as you would have expected. He also says wow. that he tells the young man to be patient. When you can get in the lab full time, Trent Williams says, you'll be a good pro too. He's learning as he goes. And Trent Williams actually played high or his nephew played high school football with Jonathan Allen. So he has known of the young man uh -huh. for a long time. And he says of us that we're going to be talking about Jonathan Allen for a long time. <laughs> And I know you're going to be talking to Jonathan Allen uh, as well. We'll have that for you a bit later on Inside Training Camp Live here presented by Mitsubishi Motors. Kim Jones, they're live in Richmond. Mike Garrett from J.D., what you got? Red, I'm here with it. the pride of Helix High. Helix High School, I mean, where you guys really thought you could beat Dennis Allen, but that's neither here nor there. Alex Smith, how has it been your 13th training camp? How is that going for you? Uh, you know what? Um, to be honest, you, know, you get older, I think, as you go on. Um, it's crazy to say this, especially with all the regulations, no more two-a-days. Uh, I really do. You start enjoying this more and more. Um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, you realize you don't take them for granted anymore, any of these days, any of these opportunities. Um, and for us, I, honestly, I, I really enjoy our locker room. I really enjoy our coaching staff. So it, it's fun to come up here and compete. Um, I love going away for camp. We're staying in the dorms. We're all hanging out with each other. Uh, for me, as an older guy, it's an opportunity to, to spend some time with the young guys uh, that I don't normally get. You know, back at the facility because I'm going home with my kids and uh, wife. So uh, I, I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy being out here. I enjoy enjoy mixing it up and competing with these guys. You know, the the, the next question. I just don't want the politically correct answer. I want you to tell me yeah. the truth. Yeah. Um, where do you do your speed work at? Because in fantasy, all of us love fantasy here. Yes. Those rushing touchdowns when you run away from guys, yeah, yeah. you're able to dive in the end zone. Yeah. Where do you where do you get that working at? <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, uh, I, I got to say, it's just all natural, you know. No, I don't know. You know just, Get uh, out of here, yeah. natural. Yeah. Are you an athlete? Uh, if you would have played us in high school, you would have seen it maybe. Uh, no, just, uh, you know, like I said, we got a competitive group. Uh, the young guys keep keep you fresh, keep you uh, chasing them. Uh, and that's really all I'm trying to do. I occasionally beat them. Well, 
this offense, right? Everyone, you know, talking about so many different things. Tyreek Hill, you have Spencer Ware, you have Travis Kelsey. What are the expectations for this offense coming forward? I mean, last year you guys did some really good things. How can you improve on those? Yeah, I mean, I think two things. Uh, for one, um, you know, for us, obviously, it's just about getting the job done. I think we take a lot of pride in having a lot of guys that can beat you, being able to beat you in a lot of different ways, right? Uh, a ton of different personnel groups, spread it out, bring it in. Uh, run pass, all, all those things. I, I think we take a lot of pride in that as an offensive unit. Um, you know, and then I think consistency, right? You got to do it on a consistent basis. Um, and I think those go hand in hand because I think when you when you have more weapons and the more ways you can get things done, I think uh, w when you do stumble or, or, or face adversity, I mean, you're able to uh, you're able to get to something else, find a new way. Uh, so really, I think that's kind of our identity and just uh, kind of continuing to, to work on it and build on it. Well, I know you're not supposed to, I'm not supposed to be a fan of teams, but I am a Raiders fan. You guys were kind of whooped up on them a little bit. You guys kind of run this AFC West division. It's probably the toughest uh, in yeah, football now, yeah. right? How do, you, how do you stay on top of it? You know, to be honest, I, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, no question, last year, obviously, I think came out, came out the better team in, in the division. And, and uh, but you look back at all those games and how close all of them are. Uh, I, I do think there is a strong sense of pride within the AFC West from every team with the competition, about the depth of our division. I think we all take a lot of pride in, in, in the, that it is the best division in football. Uh, every single matchup uh, is its own unique rivalry uh, that goes back a long way that is, that is uh, incredibly intense. Uh, the margin of error from top to bottom, I think, is uh, so small. So yeah, I mean, I think it, there's a lot of pride there to, to win it. Um, and, and certainly that's the mindset for us, but, but really obviously not, no one's gonna give us anything based off last year. So uh, I gotta start over. Everybody's gonna be gunning for us. Last question here, and this is really the most important one. What do you eat on Junk Food Fridays? <laughs> uh, the, the Junk Food Fridays have changed a little bit. It definitely cleaned up uh, from especially the, the stories I heard back in the day. But um, usually there's a little pizza there. Uh, you know, that's kind of the go-to. No, no, like, barbecue, no In-N-Out burger, no... We, I mean, there's some barbecue always around in Kansas City, so that's always close at hand. But uh, no In-N-Out in KC, man. Well, so you got to tell, because this is what I came here for. I mean, you, you're cool and everything, but yeah. I really came here for junk food Fridays barbecue, this Monday. Barbecue, man, barbecue. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of them. What should take I get and where should I go? Take your pick. Uh, you got to go to Burn Ends, man. It's Kansas City. What, uh, is, what is a burnt in? I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not an expert on this, but it is a part of the rib. Uh, it's a burnt in of the rib. <laughs> the rib. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them, man. Everybody has their favorite. Uh, I would say uh, go to Joe's or uh, Q39, man. Those are one or two spots. Red, I, I think I'll be seeing you there tonight. Burn ins. It's pretty good. God, would you quit talking about food? I got three more hours on set here, man, before we can get lunch. You're making me hungry. All right, Maurice Jones Listen, Drew. I can't help it. It's Chiefs. Kansas City. <laughs> I no, look, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, buddy. Uh Great stuff there with uh, Alex Smith. Uh, thanks very much. We're going to stick right here in the AFC West and uh, talk about a team here and head out west to Costa Mesa, California, a team that has their sights set on challenging the Chiefs for the AFC West crown in 2017. Our Alex Flanagan is with the Los Angeles Chargers uh, as they begin a new era there in L.A. in Orange County, really right now in Costa Mesa, California, the site of their training camp this year. And uh, Alex, uh, Philip Rivers' first practice uh, in the books as a member of the Los Angeles Chargers. What was his reaction? Action of day one. Yeah, Red, an exciting day out here. First of all, I know MJD, I think, is coming here maybe at the end of the week, and they have a lot of food trucks lined up, so he's going to be excited. But last time I worked with him, he told me he was going vegan, so I don't know what all this barbecue talk is about, so you're going to have to get with him on that. Yeah, I think As that lasted Phillip about an hour. Rivers, um, I think that, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> the vegan stuff's gone. <laughs> all right, well, as for Philip Rivers, um, he came into yesterday's practice um, excited, but saying that he was more nervous than usual because of all of the unknowns here. Obviously, this team has been in transition, and I think it was really a good thing for the entire organization to get day one under their belt because now they kind of know what to expect. They had a really good day of practice. When I asked Philip Rivers afterwards what he could tell after day one about his team, he said that we have the talent. He said it's not like you go out there and you say, like, oh, gosh, we, we're missing this position. We need this guy. This is where we have a hole. He said all of that is there, and that what 
they need to do over the next couple of weeks is focus on bringing that together. Remember, they've only been with their new head coach for a short time, so building the chemistry, the camaraderie. Uh, they have a new defensive coordinator as well, switching to a new defense. So I think there's a lot of those nuances that they're working on. And I liked what Alex Smith just said because Philip Rivers, I think, kind of is saying the same thing that he is excited to be here at training camp and he's really excited to be staying in a hotel with these players, something he usually doesn't do. He usually stays at home with his eight children, which he says can be kind of a distraction at times. So being able to spend time and get to know these young guys, building that camaraderie and that chemistry is what these next few weeks are about for the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, well, Rivers was without the services of his rookie wide receiver, the seventh overall pick in the draft this year, Mike Williams. And it sounds like, based on what we've been hearing from our NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport, that that absence might be an extended one for Williams. What are the Chargers saying about the impact of missing him out there at practice? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, keep in mind that it's hard to miss something that you never had, right? So Philip Rivers has yet to throw a single pass to Mike Williams, and he said yesterday, obviously, when you draft somebody seventh overall, it's disappointing not to have them here. But Rivers saying it's not like he was a draft pick where you kind of said, we have to have this guy this year to make things happen. A little bit different than maybe Joey Bosa last year, where the Chargers drafted him in the first round, and he was absolutely a huge part, a piece of their puzzle from the moment that he was drafted. You knew he was going to be plugged into that defense and that he was expected to be an impact player. I think that they, the Chargers have some depth at wide receiver, and I think that's a good thing. Obviously, having Mike Williams there, especially in the red zone, would have been a great thing for Phillip Rivers, and I think we still don't know exactly when he's going to come back, but I think Ian is right. It's a herniated disc. Right now, he's rehabbing it. I think they're going to have to wait until it's uh, asymptomatic, really, and who knows when that will be and if that doesn't happen then that would be when they would look at surgery but I certainly think Rhett there's the potential for him to possibly miss part of the season some people saying all of it just depending on how his back responds really we did see him working out yesterday we did see him catching some balls uh, from the jug machine but uh, let me say this I think a couple of those wide receivers could benefit from him not practicing especially Tyrell Williams yeah. who really last year went over a thousand yards had a, a ton of receiving yards for this team and is really as poor to kind of continue what he had last year with a bit of a breakout. Don't forget the tight end, Hunter Henry. We're going to watch him today. He's a stud, and yeah. I'm expecting he's going to have a breakout year, too. And old reliable Antonio Gates still hanging around. Yes. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, here. Still, still plenty of targets out there for Phillip Rivers. Alex Flanagan live for us there in Costa Mesa, California. Going to look forward to seeing more from Phillip Rivers tomorrow with our Steve Mariucci as he joins the GMFB crew. 7 a.m. Eastern time, our coach going one on one with the LA Chargers QB just a couple of days into training camp there in Costa Mesa.